tonight on Connecticut's news station. No, no, no. Caught on camera, a burglary turns into a police pursuit. The video you're seeing first on Fox 61. Rinse and repeat another mostly cloudy, cooler day with a few showers. We'll talk about when we break out of this weather pattern and will we do it in time for the weekend coming up. Plus budget brawl at the Capitol. We are trying to bring both the Democrats and the governor to the table with this tax package. House Republicans lay out their proposal with just weeks left in session. And bold bears. They seem to understand when it's trash day around here, so they come on those particular days. A rise in break-ins creating concerns for residents. Plus, staying safe on the water. The Coast Guard getting prepared for boating season. Breaking news now on Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Tonight we begin following breaking news out of Manchester. Police searching for a suspect who they say is armed. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on the News at 6. I'm Ben Goldman. And I'm Jen Bernstein. Police providing an update in the search for that suspect. Fox 61's Gabby Molina joins us live from Manchester in the area where that search began. Gabby. Ben and Jen, I was just speaking to a neighbor here who got a call from Manchester Police's automated system, letting them know that they no longer believe the suspect is in the area and that residents are no longer being asked to stay indoors. Now, all of this stems from a home invasion that happened earlier today. Police were focusing their attention on this home behind me at the Oak Grove condo complex a little bit earlier, and they are still looking for their suspect at this point. Police were, did release a picture of the suspect. They say it's 46 year old Rye Shashek. Police say he stole a car out of New Jersey this morning and drove to Connecticut. He is still believed to be driving that car. It's a silver 2011 Acura TL with New Jersey plates, and police say there is damage to the driver's side of the Acura. As for Shashek, he was last seen wearing blue jeans and a white sweatshirt. Police say they responded to the home invasion just after 2 o'clock this afternoon. The owner of the home showed up and saw the suspect inside. Police say the suspect chased after her, but she was able to hide in a neighbor's house. Now, police say that the suspect is considered armed and dangerous. They are warning people that he has a handgun and knives, so no one should approach him. But if you think you see that Acura that we described, if you know anything about where the suspect might be, you are asked to call Manchester police. Live in Manchester, Gabby Molina, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Gabby, thank you. Well, state budget negotiations continuing tonight, and now Republicans are throwing their hat in the ring. House GOP lawmakers releasing their own budget proposal this morning. Fox 61's political reporter Emma Wolforce joining us in studio. So, Emma, what's different about the Republicans' plan? Well, Ben, Jen, there's actually not that much. The two-year, nearly $52 billion proposal includes the historic tax cuts introduced by Governor Ned Lamont earlier this year in his budget and prioritizes education funding an important point for all sides working on this deal. Now, House Republicans hoping their plan will help accelerate budget talks in these final weeks of the legislative session. We all know that when Republicans are in the room, and part of the conversation, good things happen. Tuesday, House Republicans releasing their first budget proposal since 2017. We recognize the fact that we need a reset in this building uh, and we want to see better more thoughtful tax relief. The $51.9 billion two-year budget adopts income tax cuts proposed by the governor, increases money for education, and provides a 2.5% funding boost for nonprofits. It also creates a $2,000 per child tax deduction and calls to eliminate the sales tax on children's clothing. For Connecticut to continue to be successful and to grow even more, we have put these things in place to help us and to guide us to do that. Lamont happy with the Republicans' tax plan, which keeps his proposed cuts. But GOP lawmakers want those reductions to be retroactive to January 2023, while Lamont's wouldn't go into effect until next year. Now we can compare notes. It makes the negotiations a lot easier. I, I guess I'm happy they um, sort of mirroring what we want to do on the income tax, maybe some issues on timing there. The Democrats and the governor start that tax relief six months later than us. While Senate Republicans were absent from Tuesday's press conference, Senate Minority Leader Kevin Kelly released a statement saying Senate Republicans will continue to advocate for even more significant 
broad-based tax relief in the days ahead. Legislative Democrats also weighing in, applauding Republicans for putting a proposal together. Speaker of the House Matt Ritter saying we are in a stronger position to achieve our goal, a bipartisan budget. And that final budget needs to be approved by June 7th. Republicans tell me they've already been in contact with the governor and all parties are confident they will reach agreement on what they hope is a balanced bipartisan state budget. In the studio, Emma Wolforst, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Now, the Fox 61 Weather Watch with Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank. Following the rain today, this is from Brian LeMay in Enfield. Beautiful shot there. And once again out there today, more rain. What a surprise. And get used to it because we have more showers coming up in the days ahead. One thing I will tell you, though, is I don't think it'll be as wet the next several days, but occasionally at least we'll have a few showers out there. We've got a shower right now. We're going to zoom in on one location right around Berlin. This one previously had some small hail associated with it, but it looks like that's no longer the case. Right now we're looking at temperatures in the low 50s inland, mid to upper 50s for the Connecticut shoreline. We'll see overnight lows around 40 and then we'll do it all over again tomorrow. Mostly cloudy skies with a chance for a spotty shower, especially as we head through the afternoon. We'll talk about the light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, coming up. Rachel, thank you. An incident Fox 61 was following this morning exclusively. A police chase that ended in a crash on Route 2 right near Riverside Drive started all the way in Willimantic where the suspect stole thousands of dollars worth of merchandise from a family-owned business. Fox 61's Lindsay Kane is in Willimantic with details. You can see the damage here at Napa Auto and Truck Parts. The glass in this door completely shattered and the sign dented as well. All of this caught on camera. A box truck driving right into this to get into the store. And this is the start of what ended up being a major police pursuit. Burglary caught on camera. The suspect first ramming the door in at Napa Auto and Truck Parts in Willimantic then filling up that big white box truck with stolen merchandise. He was almost caught red handed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Willimantic police officer trying to stop the suspect in the parking lot. He speeds away with the trunk wide open, leaving a trail of evidence. It yeah. was all falling out of the trunk. Yeah. Yeah, as he sped away, the door, the back door was open, so a lot of it ended up in the road on the parking lot. By the time the father and son team, Jeff and Aaron LeBlanc, made it to their store, the suspect was caught on Route 2 near Riverside Drive, about 30 minutes away. Fox 61 spotted that truck driving on the shoulder of the road, trunk still wide open, with five police cruisers chasing it. Police say the box truck crashed into at least two other vehicles. Luckily, only minor injuries were reported. I mean, that's, that's above and beyond. If we didn't have a short response time like we had, they probably they probably wouldn't have gotten this guy. The Napa family owned business has been open for the last 10 years. They're now trying to comb through the damage and their losses. Never had a problem like this. There's, there's a few thousand dollars minimum, but it, it's I'm sure it's going to be more than that. All of their merchandise falling onto the road ended up damaged. The suspects searching the registers, then stealing generators, oil, wipers and other expensive equipment. The LeBlanc family is crediting the police department for most of their store staying intact and for locating the thief before he got away. But the Willimantic police, top notch, we estimate a four minute response time. Police say the incident is still under investigation, so you can stick with Fox 61 on air, online, and on Fox 61 Plus as we continue to learn more. And the doors bright and early this morning at Napa Auto and Truck Parts are still open as they have been since 2003. In Willimantic, Lindsay Kane, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Lindsay. Willimantic police later telling us the suspect in this burglary was also involved in an earlier incident in the town of Lisbon. The surveillance video was taken from a business in Lisbon where police say that box truck was loaded up with more items. According to investigators, the box truck has been stolen out of Waterbury. An additional arrest warrant expected for Salisbury, where he'll face even more charges. One person is dead tonight after a fire at a home in Bristol. Flames broke out at the home on Steel Road last night. As firefighters searched the home, they found the man in the basement. 
He was pronounced dead on scene. Another resident in the home was able to get out safely. No word yet on what caused the fire. It's been nearly two years since a deadly house fire took the life of a firefighter, Ricardo Torres Jr., and severely injured Lieutenant Samad Rankins. Now, after a serious recovery, Lieutenant Rankins is back to work. But the road to get here was long, and it does include a lawsuit. Fox 61's New Haven County Bureau reporter Julia LeBlanc joining us now live at the Fire Training Academy in New Haven. Julia. Hi, Jen. Good evening to you. We spoke with Lieutenant Samad Rankins as he was leaving from his first day back to work in nearly two years. He says today was a good day. It was a long one with lots of support from his department. It was a long day, but uh, a good day. After nearly two years of being on leave, Lieutenant Samad Rankins is getting back into his role as a New Haven firefighter. I'm definitely happy to be here. But the memories of May 12, 2021 are still painful. That's when Lieutenant Rankins and firefighter Ricardo Torres Jr. were responding to a house fire on Valley Street. Torres Jr. didn't make it out alive. Lieutenant Rankins did. He spent time stuck in the hospital on an intubator until this moment about a week after. He's something which I call a miracle. They always say May is a month of miracles, so he's a miracle. I mean, he's come a long ways. Sean Hardy is Rankin's cousin. His support and that from the community is what drives him. I don't know where I'd be without the community. To think that he's uh, gone through a very, very difficult period over the last two years, but is coming back to work today, it's a big deal. That period has been tough. In March, Lieutenant Rankins and his attorney filed a lawsuit against the city and the Board of Fire Commissioners, saying he was passed up for a promotion to captain twice. And it claims back in November of 2022, Rankins provided them with medical reports that, quote, indicate that the plaintiff is cleared to return to work without restrictions. But the lawsuit says the city and the department, quote, have neglected and refused to return the plaintiff to work. There may be a disagreement between uh, Lieutenant Rankins and his attorney in the city as to some details about uh, when the appropriate time was and the eligible time was to come back to work. But now the focus is on his return. Coming back is something that I know that I wanted, and I'm sure Ricardo would want it the same thing. Now, Lieutenant Rankins tells us he plans to reach out to Ricardo's mom tonight, who he says has been very supportive, and so has the department. As we mentioned, we have heard from the fire chief who says he's happy he's back to work, saying, quote, after two years away, it's good to see Lieutenant Rankins back on the job. It's been a long process for him, and we wish him a speedy return to service. Now, that process is still ongoing because Lieutenant Rankins now has to go through a recertification process before he goes back on the front lines. We're live here in New Haven. Julia LeBlanc, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.